homesteaders, gardeners, and cooks. My name is Jennifer. Welcome to Miles Away Farm. Thanks for joining me in my greenhouse. Today we are starting peppers from seed and following through that process of germination and then up potting into three inch pots. This video is a little herky jerky because it's pieced together from a bunch of different footage over the course of also planting tomatoes and onions and making seed starting mix and some other things. But hopefully it'll have some great tips and tricks for starting your own peppers, which is definitely, if I only could grow two things in my garden, it would be peppers and tomatoes. So they are definitely a passion of mine and it's gonna be fun to introduce you to what varieties I'm growing this season. Thanks for joining me. Let's see what's going on. The number one piece of advice I can give you before we get into the rest of this video about growing peppers from seed is temperature. Peppers really like to be warm. Look at the difference in germination between a typical room temperature of 68 to 70 and where we're at when we're in the 80s. So if you really want to grow peppers well, I highly encourage you to get a heat mat or have some kind of a small space that you can actually heat to 80 plus degrees. You're going to have way better germination and your plants are going to grow much faster than they would otherwise. Now let's go on to the video. I find that doing it this way rather than individual plastic pots, it gives the roots more room to sprawl and those little six pack pots really constrain the roots and for things like tomatoes and peppers, I think they do better when they have more room in terms of their roots. I'll just show you what I've done so far. So this is my second batch of this. The first batch, I filled up three of these trays and these are standard 10 by 20 trays. And what I have is this top tray has slits in the bottom. The bottom tray is does not have slits and so is waterproof. And so you can see, this way I can put them in my germination chamber and water them, not worry too much about there being too much water in there and things being too wet but it gives me the opportunity for not having drips all over the place as well. So this contraption that you see here um, is often called a dibbler, and it is a way to make marks in a tray for seeds without having to count out and do individual seeds. So very handy. These are just electrical wire covers, and then I space these out. This one is 48, and I have another one that I think is 72. Fact. So this one is 72 instead. It just depends on what kind of things I'm starting and how much room they need. And so this is how this works. You just line up, and I have lines on this to mark the edges of the tray. Just set it down, give it a little wiggle. There we go. And so now I have 72 seed holes here without having to do that individually, which saves a ton of time. There's a lot of really good hacks for different ways that you can do labeling out of old blinds and things like that. They're all great. Honestly, I just buy a box of labels from Amazon that are blank. And then more importantly, this is a garden marker. Basically, it's a paint pen. This will not fade in the sun the way a Sharpie does. Don't use a Sharpie. You won't be able to read it by July. It'll completely fade. These are from Amazon. I'll put a link below. Um, I buy them by the pack and I always use them. They're really great and they're not super expensive. And then I plan out ahead of time because otherwise it's really easy to forget some of the varieties that you bought. And then I also sell seedlings in the spring. And so on some of these that I know are gonna be popular, I'm gonna do some extra aside from what I just want. And then I also put two seeds in every hole. And that way I can plant one, sell one, and I'm covered if I've got something that isn't a great germinator. And then when I pot them up, I divide everything into individual pots. I don't usually like putting tomatoes and peppers in the same flat because the peppers tend to take longer to germinate, but I'm just gonna roll with it today. And so what I'm doing here, pepper seed generally is a little bit bigger than tomato seed. It can be planted slightly deeper, 
but same process, two in each pot. And I don't know if you guys can see this, but see how small that pepper seed is compared to that pepper seed? People don't usually talk about this, but just because they're in the pack doesn't mean they're super great. And the smaller the seed, less energy it has to germinate. And so I often will just ignore something like that if I've got a lot of seed and plant a couple of seeds that look like they're good sized and healthy. I'm looking at like that one, also not great. It looks like it's missing its little tip on the end. It might be fine. And if I'm short on seed, what I'll do is I'll plant the whole thing, but I try to make sure I've got one that looks really good and fat and healthy next to one in the same hole that's not quite as good. And that way I figure at least one of them is gonna come up. And so it doesn't hurt to kind of examine your seed and really get a sense of whether or not they seem like they're gonna have good germination. Because again, it's, that, it's an energy packet and if it's tiny and kind of sad and a little bit flat, that probably means it wasn't one of the most viable seeds that came out of that pepper. That's jalapeno, and I'm gonna do one more row of jalapeno from a different seed supplier. A lot of times I'll have multiple seed from different years. And so I like to kind of, I like to use up the old seed, but I also like to cover and hedge my bets. And so if I've got something that is older and some that's newer, I'll plant both and often make a note. Sometimes I don't, sometimes I just notice, oh, this one didn't germinate well, and I'm not really sure why, because I've forgotten that I've done that. But it's a good way to use up seed, but also make sure that if you've got a lower germination rate because the seed is older, that you've also got some nice fresh seed in there as well. That's the nice thing about selling seedlings is if I need six jalapenos and I'm planting here six, 12, 18, 24 jalapenos, jalapenos are popular and so I know they'll sell but if it turns out I only get 10 that germinated out of 18, well, then I'm covered and I have a few to sell, but I'm well covered. So it's nice to be able to have some extra. If they don't germinate well, then I just don't have those to sell. And so I'm good either way. Same process. And these peppers are planted. I didn't fill in the hole the way I did on the tomatoes because the pepper seed is a little bigger, it's gonna have a little more ability to push up. And I also find if you plant pepper seeds too shallow, they, they need that friction of the soil in order to push off their seed coat. And a lot of times if they don't have that, they'll get stuck. And so you'll have a pepper that's come up, but the seed coat is still stuck on the plant. And a lot of times, even with spraying it with water or using spit or whatever the tricks are, um, it just won't come off and I'll end up having a plant that's not viable because the seed coat never came off. So a little bit deeper on peppers in order to have that friction to push that seed coat off, I think really helps. However, if they're too deep, they just flat out won't come up. So peppers can be a little tricky. Let's water this one in. I'm going a little heavier on this because I added a bunch of soil to the top and didn't water it in earlier. And then we move on to the peppers. Sugar Rush Peach, I think that'll be popular for sale this year and a lot of people really love that as a hot sauce pepper. So I'm gonna grow that. Uh, I can't remember if I've grown this in the past. I may have grown it three or four years ago, but this is, I'm gonna do it again because it's gaining popularity and I think it'll be a good crop to sell. Hungarian Black, which looks like a black jalapeno Pumpkin spice jalapeno, which is an orange jalapeno, it does not taste like pumpkin spice. It's just named for the color. And then two rows of regular jalapenos. I have visions this year of selling clamshells that are a mix of the Hungarian black, the pumpkin, and the green jalapeno, and maybe some of these green jalapenos that have turned red. So basically four different colors in one clamshell. I think that would just be stunning. And so that's my plan this year is to sell those as a mixed bag. And then I also do a lot of stuff with jalapenos in terms of cowboy candy. And then I let them get ripe and turn them into a fermented hot sauce, which is one of my most popular videos. And so I can't basically have too many of these. They're all gonna be awesome. So that's my plan for that. So that's this tray. 
and we're gonna plant some more peppers and keep going. This is a Calabrian pepper. And Calabria is a part of Italy. It's a specific location in Italy. And just like cashmere or cashmere peppers, um, you're talking about a region. You're not talking about a specific variety. And so there's actually many different types of Calabrian peppers. And I was very confused about that and decided I wanted to grow them and then was looking online and sometimes they're jarred and preserved and they were all different shapes and I was like, what is happening? So I finally kind of dug a little deeper and decided that the dog nose variety of Calabrian pepper was the type I wanted to grow. And I have a friend from high school who lives in the United Kingdom and Sometimes when I can't find seed for something in the United States that I really want to grow, I will appeal to him and ask him if he will buy it for me and just throw it in the mail. And so that's what he ended up doing. So these are Calabrian peppers from Italy, bought online in the UK and then mailed to me. That's super exciting. Ethiopian brown. Um, if you've ever had Berber spice, which is a really common spice in Ethiopian cooking. It's used in the wats and a lot of the other type, typical Ethiopian dishes. It's a very dark brown colored pepper. It's typically used dried. And I have an Ethiopian spice mix that I sell, but I've never been able to make it from actual Ethiopian varieties of peppers. And so I found a source online for these this year and I'm super excited to grow those. That's gonna be really fun. Guajillo is a Mexican pepper that I have recently kind of fallen in love with. It is very, very mild, and it's typically used dried in chili powder and those kind of things, but it's more mild than anchos, which is a dried poblano pepper. Uh, really no heat to speak of, and just a really wonderful fruity flavor. So I'm growing those myself this year. I usually buy them from a fellow farmer, and last fall he did not have any extras, and I was very disappointed because I used it in some of my spice mixes. So as a backup plan, I'm gonna grow some for my own use and then buy some from him if he has them. I have a Thai pepper here that is from Kitazawa Seed Company, which is an Asian seed company. I have had really good luck with their seed. It's a lot of fun to try some of those Asian varieties. For some reason, it's very hard to find Thai peppers that are actually red when they're ripe. I find a lot of them that are yellow or other colors, and I specifically wanted a red one because they look much better dried for sale when they're red. And so this is a Thai pepper that I'm trying out this year that's new to me. I have a Korean gochugang pepper, or gochugang. Gochugang is a chili paste that's fermented that is really popular in Korean cooking and is kind of a real foody thing right now. I've looked up trying to make gochugang. It is not something that you can easily do in a home kitchen. It is quite complicated. However, just growing the peppers that go into it is super fun. And so these are gochugang peppers also from uh, Kitazawa. I have a few cubanelles, which is like a, a big green long bell style pepper that's used in a lot of Caribbean cooking. And I've grown those and had great success with them in the past. They're a really nice pepper. Um, so a few of those, only a few for me because I don't think they're going to sell well because people don't know what they are and anything new and weird is not something people typically want to try. Shish a few shishito peppers. I grow a few to sell as plants. I don't grow the actual fruit because one of the other farms has a million of them and sells a ton of them. They introduced people to the that variety at farmer's markets and so it's really their thing and so I don't want to step on their toes by trying to sell them on top of what they're doing. But I grow a few just for my own use. Carmen is my favorite sweet pepper. It is not a bell pepper. It is a what's called a bullhorn style pepper. So it's long and skinny. It is super sweet. It doesn't get sunburned as much as the bell peppers tend to do and absolutely fantastic flavor and quite prolific. So this is currently my favorite sweet pepper. I grow a lot of these. So a row of Carmen, a row of bullnose, which is a bell pepper. This was a bell pepper that was grown by Thomas Jefferson. So it is a very, very, very old heirloom. And I just love the story behind it. They're a nice pepper. They need a little bit of shade cloth so that they don't get super sunburned, but they're a really nice eating pepper and I grow them every year. Kashmiri, this is another UK variety that I had my friends send to me because I could not get Kashmiri peppers in the United States for some reason. Um, this is the last of the seed that he sent me and then I saved seed from them last year and hopefully that seed isn't crossed. Um, peppers are a little bit tricky sometimes to save seed from because they do tend to cross more than the books would tell you that they do. But I chose to save seed from the middle of the stand so it was a long way away from the other peppers. So hopefully my seed will be good and I won't have to order that from the UK again. It's a really nice fruity dried pepper, not real hot. You've probably seen me use it in a couple of different recipes. Cayams, I always grow a few cayams. They're great to throw into a hot sauce. 
and they're just nice. That's when you buy red chili pepper ground. This is typically what it is, is cayenne. And then two full rows of poblanos. I love poblanos. I love them roasted and eaten green. And then if you let them get ripe and then dry them, they become anchos. And so I grow a lot of them and dry them as anchos to go into homemade chili powder. So basically you can't have too many poblanos. I tried to grow, I wanna say 36 last year. And I had two different seed sources and it turns out one of the seed sources was the wrong seed in the packet. And they were not poblanos, they were most likely shishitos. And so I ended up with like five or six poblano plants and then everything else was shishitos, which is not what I wanted for the reasons I just explained. So I had like 29 shishito plants, which was just ludicrous. And I didn't know for sure they were shishitos. I just thought they probably were based on the flavor and the size. So I have two rows of poblanos and there's two seeds in each spot and six. So that's 24 total if they all germinate. And so I'll have lots of poblanos this year to grow out. And that is the next tray and we still have peppers to go. All right, bring you back here. So my third tray of peppers. This is almost all paprika pepper. And you can grind any pepper, dry it and grind it up and make basically a pepper powder, which is all paprika is. It's been fun to, to uh, educate people about that because sometimes people think there's like a paprika tree or something, but it's actually just a type of pepper. And there's a lot of different kinds of paprika peppers. Basically, they are any pepper that has good flavor when dried. And sometimes they're spicy, sometimes they're sweet. I've tried many, many, many different kinds over the years. My current favorite comes from Sandia. I don't have a seed pack, but this is the company Seeds of the World from Sandia Seed out of New Mexico. And they make one called Nakey. It is phenomenal, um, really great flavor and also just incredibly productive. I've liked Bulldog, which is this one for years, and it is also a really, really good flavored sweet paprika pepper. However, this one outperformed this in terms of actual volume of peppers by about three or four fold. So way better production on these. It's most likely a hybrid, which is probably why it's so much better. But Bulldog is another good sweet one. The other ones that I've tried, I haven't been as wowed by. Either they didn't have a great flavor, they kind of tasted like store-bought paprika pepper, which tends to just taste like brown dust, or they were spicy. And I'm not really looking for a hot paprika. I got a million other peppers that have spice that I can grind into a powder if I want something spicy. And so I'm not looking for a spicy paprika pepper. I am looking for a sweet paprika pepper. I would love to have a Spanish sweet paprika, and I've done a bunch of research on what varieties that would be, and because they are proprietary to that part of Spain, it is pretty much impossible to get seeds for them. So I have researched that pretty extensively to no avail. But if anybody has a line on some authentic Spanish paprika pepper seeds, there's three or four or five different varieties that are grown that are known for their Spanish paprika. And Spanish paprika that you buy is actually a blend of those different peppers in different quantities. Someday, someday I'm gonna crack that nut and I'll actually have real Spanish, authentic Spanish paprika seed, but not this year. All right, the last pepper that we need to plant is Aleppo. So let's get that going. By the way, if you are a small homestead and you're thinking that as a side gig, you're gonna start selling seedlings or selling produce, here's my big piece of advice from doing that for the last 10 years. There are people out there that are big foodies and they're very adventuresome and they love to garden and they love to try new things. And that's probably 10% of your audience. The other 90% want something that looks exactly like what they buy in the grocery store. And if it's a different color, if it's a different shape than what they're used to, they do not know what to do with it. It freaks them out and they ask, what do I do with it? 
So like a Japanese eggplant versus a regular Italian eggplant, that will freak them out. A stripy green zucchini rather than a regular green zucchini, that will freak them out. And so my advice is always grow some really conventional looking produce and then have a few fun things for you and for the more adventuresome people and just give away one of the different varieties to somebody and say, here, try this. It's free. You know, thanks for buying my regular zucchini. Try one of these stripy ones too. And just let people try new things without any money in the game because it, it does really just freak people out. They just, they want exactly what they're used to. So Aleppo comes from Syria. It's a seed that is grown in Syria and is famous there. It is very hard to get seed for. This is the only seed that I've ever purchased from Amazon. However, I do believe it is authentic and I dry it and use it in a lot of my spice mixes and I dry it and sell it just as a ground spice as well because it is unique. Um, it's a lovely flavor. It's got a little bit of heat, a lot of fruitiness. And because I started out with 10 seeds from Amazon, it's not something I can easily get commercial seed for. And so I have been saving seed from my Aleppo every year that I've grown them. And sometimes I, I think there's one year in here that I forgot to, to actually save. Yeah, 2020, I didn't save any seed. But I have Aleppo seed from 2018, 2019, 2021, 2022. And what I do is I plant a big patch of Aleppo. And then when I'm saving seed, I pick the, the peppers to save seed from in the center of the patch so that if they've been crossed by a bee or something else then they've been crossed by um, another aleppo pepper so i'm trying to preserve that genetic diversity there's things you can do where you can net um, to keep insects off and that kind of thing but the problem is that um, it's hard to do it's it's not an easy thing to remember to put an organza bag around part of the plant before those, seed, those flowers actually bloom. And I'm really busy in the middle of the summer and I often, well, always forget to do that. But these have a very unique look to them and I'll put a picture up on the screen. And so I've been able to perpetuate this seed pretty well for the last five years or so. And I'm pretty confident that it's still very authentic to what I originally got. There's no way to know for sure that what I got off of Amazon was authentic Aleppo seed, you know, because people can say whatever they want. However, there is a another farm in a different part of the country, and I had posted a picture of Aleppo peppers and in a bucket that I had picked and said something about the harvest. And I didn't say it was Aleppo pepper. I just said something about, you know, the peppers are coming on or whatever. And their comment was, those look like Aleppo. And that made me feel better because it made me feel like they were validating what I had. Of course, I don't know where their seeds came from. Maybe their seeds came from Amazon as well. And so we're both just growing the same thing and it's not the real thing. But they're a great little pepper. I use them for a lot of different spices. Um, so well worth growing. So what I'm doing here, because I have seed from multiple years, I'm just going to grow out some from each year. And starting with 2018, 2019, I will probably get less germination on the older stuff, but I figure I might as well use the seed. And I'm, you know, I'm putting two seeds in each hole, so I'm gonna have a lot of extra. This is the last of the 2019. For whatever reason, I did not save quite as many seeds that year. And I've had great germination on the pepper seed that I've saved. I've also on occasion had very obviously crossed seed. So it does, they will cross, especially if you don't have it in a big patch. If you just have, you know, like one or two jalapenos next to one or two of something else and you have a lot of bee pollinators out there, there's a good chance that they'll be crossed. I sell a few of these as plants, but it's not something most people want. Most people have never heard of it. They don't know what to do with it. Again, it freaks them out. And I'll do a video later in the year on how to save pepper seeds because it's it's not hard to do and it's kind of fun. And I will show you how to do it so that you have much better success than if you just scrape them out of the plant. There's a trick to that that really helps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29,
All right, that's probably all I need. I'll leave last year's seed alone and not bother with that one. Every year I grow habanero. Every year it doesn't do well for me. They really like heat. For some reason, I don't have quite the right climate for it. I had one year where I got a lot, where it was like the perfect year for them. And I've grown them every year since and gotten like a handful. I get a lot of green ones and I don't get a lot of ripe ones. Genus species on pepper. The common genus species is Capsaicum anum. Habanero is chinensis. And so it's a different species. And chinensis has different requirements. It needs different things. And so if you've ever tried to grow different chilies and had some be wildly successful and others not, that may be why. So it's worth looking up what's the genus species of this particular pepper that I'm growing. Because this is the only chinensis that I grow, I'm not particularly worried that these are going to be crossed with anything else. Can't remember off the top of my head for positive sure if chinensis will cross with anum. My guess is no. All right, so there is habanero. Look at my list. So what I've been doing here, I have my list of all the peppers that I'm growing this year. And as I've put them into the dirt, I've been putting a dot next to them to, to remind myself that yes, I have planted those. So that's actually all I need for this. So now I gotta figure out what to put in the rest of this flat. And the trick is you want something that's gonna come up in about the same amount of time. Because if you do something that's gonna be super fast, it's gonna be tricky to, to manage both of those things at the same time. Hey guys, I thought I would bring you into my germination chamber and give you a quick update on how we're doing. These are pepper seeds that are coming up and I don't have 100% yet. Um, I've still got a few that are just starting to pop, but excellent germination on my peppers in a week. And actually the peppers went in the day after. So this was from Friday. So this has been exactly a week today and you can see all the babies coming up in here. This is what a 75 to 80 degree temperature range and some good humidity will do for your peppers. Sometimes peppers, if they're just at room temperature, can take up to two weeks to germinate. And these are just doing amazing. This is home saved Aleppo. And I had three different years. So the two years is, or two rows is one year, two, years, two rows is another year two more rows is a third year. And so some of these are three years old, four years old, and I'm getting incredible germination on all of them. I generally find that seed that I have saved, I have much better germination on than I do commercial seed, even when it's older. Um, there's something about that home seed that really makes a huge difference. guys I am out here in my greenhouse potting up some peppers and I thought I'd bring you along for a few minutes and just conclude this video on growing peppers from seed. A lot of people will start peppers earlier than they start their tomatoes because they're slower to grow. That is primarily because of temperature and if you can find a way to get them into a warmer situation, they will grow as fast as a tomato will. So these were all planted at the exact same time as my tomatoes were, and I had them in a germination chamber where they were able to be at 75 to 80 degrees, and they've been under grow lights, and they are looking incredible. So it really helps if you can get some heat on them. I like to figure out how many transplants I have and make all of my labels first, because that way I don't accidentally keep going and start putting stuff in pots without a label. If there is a way to mess up which plants 
you're growing. I have done it. I've been growing stuff from seed, oh gosh, since probably 2005. So almost 20 years. And I have definitely messed it up in every possible way. And sometimes I just have a tag with a question mark because I'm not really sure what I've done. But because of that, I have worked out most of the bugs in the system and I'm pretty consistent. I always have to remember to make one less than the number of plants so that I can reuse the tag that's actually on the row as well, so. Let me bring you around and show you these guys. So this is, I have Sugar Rush Peach, Hungarian Black, and they're really fun because they've got that purple leaf color, which is really cool. Pumpkin Jalapeno, and then two rows of regular jalapenos. The one thing I have learned about growing peppers for sale is it is definitely one of those things that it is a niche market. And there are a lot of people that don't like peppers, period. They just don't seem to use them. And if they do want them, they want something they've heard of. And so I love unusual varieties and fun things. And I know from experience that a lot of times those don't sell. Whether you're trying to sell the plant or whether you're trying to sell the pepper itself, that people want the stuff they're familiar with. They want the stuff that they've seen at the grocery store. Ooh, sorry, dude. We'll see how that one does that. I just tore a lot of his roots. He was really close to his neighbor. The process for this is pretty much identical to the process for transplanting tomatoes. And I have a whole video on that. I really probably should have transplanted these a couple of days ago. I had too many other things going on to be able to do it. They're a little bit on the large size, and so their roots are getting pretty extensive. And when I've got two growing right next to each other, it's a little harder. Look at the roots on that. I mean, that's just amazing. It makes it a little harder to unwind them when they're right next to a neighbor. Boy, that's a happy plant. You can plant peppers a little deeper than they were growing when you transplant them. However, they will not grow roots on their stem the same way that a tomato will. It doesn't necessarily hurt them to put them in a little bit deeper, but it's not gonna benefit them either. But if your plants are just slightly leggy, that is something you can do. If they're really leggy, it's not gonna save you. And mine are, there. there's a tiny bit of legginess here, but it's not bad. And I'm trying as hard as I can to not disturb the roots any more than I absolutely have to, because the more you knock the dirt off those roots, the more you disturb them, the more transplant shock. And they often will recover without any problems, but it's better if they don't have to recover. It's better if they're just happy from the beginning. I need to put a little bit of moisture in this soil. It's a little bit too dry. I want this soil moist enough that when I poke a hole in it, the hole stays there. And if it all just falls back in, then they're a little bit too dry. All right, four more. Thankfully, with Sugar Rush, it's become kind of a darling of a lot of YouTubers. And so I'm hoping, I'm growing some of these for me, I'm growing some of them for sale. I'm hoping that at this point, enough people have heard about them that I won't have a hard time selling some of these. And plus it's just the best name for a pepper ever. It just sounds so good. It's like you wanna grow it just because of the name. Got one tiny little guy who is a late comer We'll see how he does. There we go. So there is all the sugar rush in. I have a list out here of everything I'm growing. 
and how many of them I need for my own use. So I want six of these for my own use. I tend to plant peppers in groups of three, and so I often will choose a multiple of three if I'm keeping them. All right, next up is the Hungarian black. And I'm just gonna keep going. I'll bring you back and show you when they're all finished. All right, you guys, back in my greenhouse. Today is April 7th, and I have most of my peppers potted up. I still have a few that I haven't quite got to. But you can see how everybody's doing. And what I do is as I pot these up, I sort them into flats that I'm going to keep and flats that I'm gonna sell. And so I have tags that say keep, which means everything in here I'm keeping. This is also a keeper. This one I'm selling. I'm guessing about 50% of these are keepers and another 50% are selling. I often also put it on a piece of blue sticky tape, I try to make it really clear because sometimes I have people helping me and they will not necessarily notice this additional little tag, um, even though it's a slightly different color. But yeah, huge, huge job to get all of these potted up and I'm still not all the way done. So we've got, this is that flat of paprika peppers and the Anaheim Joe Parkers. And they're, they're the only ones I haven't done. And so I'm almost done. There's two chunks of paprika here. These are all the Joe Parker. And then this, I'm gonna say it wrong. I'll put it on the screen. Um, this Basque paprika pepper that I got from Baker Creek Seed. I have zero germination on this and I have a new six pack of them in my germination chamber because I thought maybe I just got busy when I was planting all of those and completely forgot to put the seeds in because I've done that before and it's really unusual to have zero germination, especially when you consider the rest of this flat. And I had four total flats of peppers and they all had this level of germination. But the six pack that I have in the germination chamber that's about a week old now, it also has zero germination. So I don't know what is happening with this particular seed, but I'm definitely getting a big um, zero on the germination on that, which is a huge bummer because I was, somebody gave me this as a saved seed last year and it was really fun to try, but I was really unsure of whether or not the peppers had crossed and I was pretty sure they maybe had crossed and so I wanted to grow them from a commercial strain so that I knew for sure that they were pure and that they hadn't crossed and yeah so we'll see hopefully I'll keep you updated on that but hopefully we'll get something but it's not looking good right now so yeah tons and tons of peppers I still have more to go but I want to wrap this video up because it's already really really long if you've stayed to the end good and grief thank you so much and um, just as a bonus if you did stay to the end, here are all of my tomatoes. Also marked sell or keep. I don't keep nearly as many of these. And then some eggplant on the end. So yeah, things are coming along. It's raining outside, but it is almost 70 degrees in here. So gorgeous. And we are running out of space. The greenhouse is filling up for sure. Thanks for watching, Tribe. I appreciate all of your interest. If you like this kind of content, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment and subscribe. What kind of peppers are you growing this year?